Hey, brothers and sisters, the bride of Christ is ready for the rapture every day. The bride of Christ also, we are Bereans. What is a Berean? A Berean is someone who studies the scriptures daily to test the spirits to see if what they are saying agrees with scriptures. So I don't do that much Facebook, but I want to expose this woman. Uh, I think she calls herself Celestial. I think she calls herself Celestial. The Master's Voice Prophecy Blog, I think is what her uh, YouTube channel is. And I'm going to show it. This is how I test the spirits. Now, I will have to say, I agree with Kyrian. He says, uh, he's talking about, I mean, I don't, I, I know that T.G. Jakes is a bad guy. I don't know if what she's accusing him of um, being a homosexual, I don't know. But I do know that he is, um, he performed the remarriage ceremony for his uh, daughter. That's all I know, really. I don't know much about it. But anyway, Kyrian said, when we post warnings to you to run away from sin and every unrighteousness and you reject them, but contend you have pleasure in your wickedness, you are simply storing up wrath upon yourself against the day of God's wrath and righteous judgment. Flee from fornication fly adultery it should not it's not fly adultery it's cease from adultery do away with your sodom sodomy o sodomite stop lying you who tell half truths don't give bribes don't lust after another man's wife don't steal another woman's husband don't defile children or sleep with animals continue in these evils and seal your cage in hell when God has finished cleansing his church, only a few will remain. Many pastors will go down. Many of you so-called Christians will not find a place to stand. Buckle up. Let this be a warning to those who love to twist God's word to justify their sins of divorce and adulterous remarriage. Jesus will remove your branch from his vine. You are stench to his kingdom. Well, I agree with Kieran about that. Um, oh, sorry. It keeps on going. God is calling Christians to repentance. Repent while there is still yet so slim a chance of obtaining God's favor. There is a point where you sin and God will no longer forgive you. You know, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. He's like, all day long, I told you to repent and turn to me. Turn to me. Repent and turn to me. Draw close to me and I will draw close to you. James 4, uh, 6 through 8. He says, um, you can sin beyond redemption. Yeah, you can, you, can, you can harden your heart against God. And he said, this is what happened to T.G. Jakes and Eddie Long, who is in hell now. Um, and Eddie Long, yeah, he was an adulterer. So, yeah, I, I do know about Eddie Long uh, in Atlanta. Um, you know, I don't even know. Is T.G. Jakes? I don't know where T.G. Jakes is, but Eddie Long in Atlanta um, I've talked to some people that had gone to his church and found out about his sins. Anyway, stop living in secret sins. God will destroy you. Repent and come out of your sins. Well, Kyrian, I agree with that message, but here I have a problem with this woman. And the reason why is she's prophesying a year ago that God is going to strike T.D. Jakes dead for... Uh, homosexuality which I don't know I don't keep up with it I don't know where T.D. Jakes is what he's doing but this so then I look at this prophetess and you know she's got on the Jewish um, shawl head covering and then I go to her YouTube channel and I search for rapture and this video comes up which she says thus saith the Lord this is thus saith the Lord and the thing is it says that men and women will prophesy. Acts 2, 17 and 18 in the last days, men and women will prophesy. But we have to test what does the prophet say and does that agree with scripture? Well, here she's got this prophecy about the 144,000, just like so many of them do. So just let's listen to a little bit and I'll tell you why she's a false prophetess. This from the Lord at 4.43 p.m. today. 
It is a brief word concerning a specific group of people that are called the 144,000. Now, just as I was preparing the camera and getting ready to start, I have always said that I would ask the Lord if there's anything that he wants to add. And these are the exact words that I'm going to read directly as I received with nothing added or left out. Tell them that the 144,000 are coming out. The 144,000 are... Pause. She uh, heard this from the Lord in April of 2022. A special tribe unto God. They are the Lord's chosen. They are the Lord's elite. They are chosen only from Israel. No other people or nation may ascribe to this calling except my people Israel. No other nation or people may claim this calling except my people Israel. The 144 have special giftings, powers, abilities that are comparable to, if not greater than, all the sons of Satan. They are my elite, and I have elected them out of the virgin bride of Christ to be there you go. You got to listen carefully out of the virgin bride of Christ. That is a flat out lie. You notice she's saying people instead of men. And she says out that the Lord told her the 144,000 are out of the virgin bride of Christ. That is an error against what the scripture says. The bride of Christ is the church of born-again believers, both male and female, slave and free, Jew and Greek. The bride of Christ is around the world, male and female, Jew or Gentile, slave or free. We're all one in Christ Jesus. The bride of Christ is not that it's got some special elite group of 144,000 that are being chosen out of it. Why is it she says this? Because she believes the bride of Christ goes through the tribulation. Bear my name, to wear my mark, to be my people. No one else will walk in the power, wisdom, might, or knowledge of the 144,000. They have special powers. They will do what nobody has seen before. It is them who will fight these creatures. It is them who will handle the Nephilim. Prepare the way, says the Lord, for the 144,000. And so you have heard the word of the Lord that there are people in the population living today who are God's chosen and elect. The Lord calls them an elite, a special tribe unto himself. They come. It's just not biblical. It's 12 thousand from the 12 tribes of the Jews and they are all male and they are all virgins she did this prophecy on April 29th of 2022 she teaches the book of Revelation she goes on to say she goes into this whole thing about um, the she goes in this whole thing about the book of Enoch and Jasher, extra biblical books. And she says it twice. There she says it. Um, where, let me see, let me see. They come out of the virgin bride of Christ right there. And then she says it later on in this video. The virgin bride of Christ is not here during the tribulation. So this would also make her a foolish virgin. And then she talks about, you know, being the survivors. For these things, you can go to the master's voice and look at the prophecy survivors. I will leave it in the description box and I will make it a comment. Also, he said that they are chosen out of the virgin bride. You can find out more about their virgin bride status in revelation 14. He says that they 
So that's just completely wrong. She doesn't know what the Virgin Bride of Christ is. She really doesn't. And then she goes on to add to the scriptures as to what the seal is going to look like that's on the on the uh, 144,000. We're not going to be here for this. Here she goes. That they will carry his name. They will wear his mark. I spoke of this mark because the Lord directed me to speak of the mark. It is a mark that will be in the forehead and it is a white mark that changes. It will sometimes look like a word. Okay, it will sometimes change and be a circle or a square, and it is not a mark that matches any form of human skin. It looks like basically a light bulb, a glowing fluorescent filament under the head. And the Lord said that they will bear that mark. They are his people, and no one else will have their... So, that may be the case. But how could it be that she could be right on that if she's wrong on who these people are? They're all men. They're all men. They are not men and women. They are not out of the bride of Christ. She refers to Revelation 14, but she only gives you a little, a little bit of the truth and a whole bunch of lies. And I... I looked, and lo, <clears throat> a lamb stood on Mount Zion, and with him a hundred and forty-four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of great thunder. And I heard the voice that harpers harping with their harps, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne. So this is while they're, they've they are up in heaven by now and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. This is not 144,000 as the bride of Christ. These are the 144,000. I'm going to, I'll show you where they are first uh, mentioned in Revelation, but she's talking about Revelation 14. They're redeemed from the earth. Verse four is so important. They are the, these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. You see, they have to be men. They have to be men. They can't be people. They have to be men who are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These are redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. Now we go over to where they're first referred to. First, I'll show you Revelation 3, because this is for the church, the angel of the church of Philadelphia. Verse 10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. So those are those are the church. That's the church of Philadelphia. It's got men and women in it, and they have kept the word of my patience, or they have persevered. And we are taken away from this world to go to be in heaven. And when do we get to go? Praise the Lord, we are going. Revelation 4, and after this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show these things that must happen hereafter, hereafter. That's the Lord. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and the one sat upon the throne. Okay, then we go to, so we're up in heaven. We've been raptured. And then four and five is the activity of going on what's in the rapture. Then Revelation six, it says, I saw the lamb open one of the seals. That's the lamb, Jesus. And I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four 
beast saying, Come and see. And I saw, behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and the crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. That's the Antichrist. So that's before the, that's before, you know, that's the first seal, the Antichrist. We are not in the tribulation yet because we're already, we have to escape what is coming upon the whole earth. Then we get down to verse, hmm, let's see, where is it? Sorry, then we get to Revelation 7, and it says um, in verse 3, saying, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God, in their foreheads and i saw i heard the number of them which were sealed and they were sealed a hundred and forty four thousand of all the tribes of the children of israel of the tribe of judah were sealed twelve thousand of the tribe of reuben were twelve thousand so she got that right but she didn't get it right that these are all male virgins and a lot of a lot of these false prophetesses and prophets assume that they are part of the 144,000. It's twisting God's word. It's adding. It's adding to the scriptures. But the good news about this is after the raptures happened, when we get down to Revelation 7, 13, and one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence they came they? And I said unto them, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them into, unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. I missed, oh, sorry. After the, I need to go back to verse 9. That's what I meant to say. Um, when you go and it's got the 12 tribes, they're all male, they're all virgins, they're not defiled with women. And then we get to verse 9, which is our hope for the people who are going to be left behind. And after this, I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. That's the great multitude that is going to get saved during the tribulation that is not the virgin bride of christ it's just not and then so all i do you know you can do this yourself the master's voice prophecy blog then i search for rapture and what does it come up stop being deceived about the rapture wake up and be sober about his coming she doesn't believe in been that. watching all their lives the left behind books that they've been reading since they were eight years old whatever they feel is true the rapture channels that keep getting it wrong year after year in america but they never lose subscribers because all you need to do in america to correct a wrong prophecy is delete the video and your subscribers will not complain they will tell you we all get it wrong brother god is speaking to the church so we don't delete our videos if our prophecy is true has she deleted videos of her false prophecies? I don't know. But the fact is, you know, I get that all the time. People like, oh, you've watched too many Left Behind movies and stuff. Y'all, when God told me to start doing videos about the rapture, I'd had my first dream about the rapture. I had studied Revelation in five different Bible studies. It was either four or five different Bible studies I had studied and none nobody had told me whether the rapture was pre mid post nobody had told me and then I have my first dream about the rapture and I was in a wedding dress so I was the bride of Christ I was a bride of Christ it's not one person I was a bride of Christ 
and I was told that Jesus was coming to get me. When I asked, who is the bridegroom? And I was told Jesus was coming to get me and that God told me to start doing my channel and nothing, nothing, there is no way that the bride of Christ goes through the tribulation. The foolish virgins, yes, the foolish virgins. And so, you know, she's got all these people. This had 96,000 views five months ago where she was telling people that the church goes through the tribulation she is the false prophetess. The church does not go through the tribulation. If you're born again, you are excited about the rapture coming. You, you know that the rapture is close at hand. It actually is sin not to be looking for it when you look at Matthew 24, 42 through 44. Matthew 24, verse 35 Heaven and earth will disappear. Heaven and earth disappear when there is the new heaven and the new earth at the very end of the book of Revelation. But my words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the son himself. Only the father knows. You know, these oneness people have a really hard time with that. No, the son, Jesus himself, while he was here on, in, on earth, did not know the day and hour. Up in heaven, seated at the right hand of God the Father, he knows. Verse 37, when the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. That is the way it will be when the Son of Man comes. So people think, oh, well, that means that, you know, everything is looking pretty normal and that the Son of Man comes and then that's the end. That's the end. But that's not the end because there is the seven-year tribulation, also known as Daniel, Daniel's 70th week. And then it says in verse 40, two men will be working together in the field. One will be taken, the other left. Two women will be grinding flour at the mill. One will be taken, the other left. Taken where? We just read it in Revelation 3.10. Taken away from the earth. What's going to come upon the men of the earth? We're going to be taken as the bride of Christ away from the earth then verse 42 this is a command from jesus christ so you too must keep watch for you don't know what day your lord is coming if he was coming at the end of the tribulation just to come down in his second coming just to come down and set up his kingdom why would he we would know the exact day that he was coming because it says that the tribulation lasts for seven years, three and a half and three and a half years. But we don't know the day of the rapture. You must keep watch because you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Understand this. If the homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. He repeats the command. So you must be ready all the time for the Son of Man will come when least expected. So, yeah, she's right about people that just are sitting there saying this is the day of the rapture. This is the day of the rapture. That's nobody knows the day of the rapture. We are to be ready all the time. And the Son of Man is going to come when least expected. Then. Verse 45, a faithful, sen sensible servant is one to whom the master can give the responsibility of managing his other household servants and feeding them. If the master returns and finds that the servant has done a good job, there will be a reward. I tell you the truth, the master will put that servant in charge of all he owns. But what if the servant is evil and thinks, my master won't be back for a while? And he begins beating the other servants, partying, and getting drunk. 
obviously that is not the fruit of the spirit. The master will return unannounced and unexpected, and he will cut the servant to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. In that place will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's hell. (laughs) And then we go to Matthew 25. Now I'm reading the New Living Translation, but you know, it's still... Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. And I I think she's actually got a teaching on this too, which has got to be wrong. It's got to be wrong because she's thinking the bridegroom. I wonder if she even says that Jesus came in the flesh. I don't know. But anyway, the five who were foolish did not take enough olive oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil because our lamps are growing are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in to meet him to the marriage feast. Where is the marriage feast? Where is the marriage feast? It's up in heaven. It's not here on earth. Why is it that people think that if you're going to go through the tribulation, then Jesus is going to come down and have the marriage feast here on earth? He's not. And the door was locked. Later, the other five bridesmaids returned. They stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back and said, believe me, I don't know you. He doesn't know you. He doesn't know you intimately if you are not. If you're not part of the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, he does not know you. He's going to, you know, that is a form of judgment. Those who are the wise virgins are the ones who are going to be raptured. The foolish virgins are the ones who are going to be, who thought they knew Jesus. They called him Lord, Lord, but they did not know him. They did not have him, the Holy Spirit indwelling in them. And then verse 13 is another command from Jesus Christ. So you too must keep watch for you do not know the day or hour of my return. Then if we go over to Matthew 7, 21 through 23, this just proves what is going on with so many of these false prophets. Matthew 7 I love Matthew 7, really. Uh, The golden rule. Do to others whatever you would like to have, like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the law and the prophets. The narrow gate. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few will ever find it it's when you repent of your sins and turn completely and surrender to the lord jesus that he will give you the power to walk on the very narrow road the power comes from being filled with the holy spirit being born again and being filled with the holy spirit and it's a it's amazing not any works that we did to get there it's that god chose to give us eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. But beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit. That is by the way they act or speak. Can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce good fruit, bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. 
how is it that if you are wanting to obey the golden rule that you would sin against other people when you don't want them sinning against you and then how can you have a how can you have a prophet who is telling you that you're going to go through the tribulation the seven seals the seven trumpets the seven bowls and how can that be? And they're telling you that that is, you know, the 144,000 are a chosen number out of the Virgin Bride of Christ. When that isn't, it's twisting God's word. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, you can identify a tree by its fruit. So you can identify people by their actions. And then this is like the, the most incredible you know, just think about it. True disciples. Verse 21. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord. Same as what were the foolish virgins doing? They were saying, Lord, Lord. And he says, go away. I never knew you, basically. He said, I do not know you. Here. Lord, Lord. Not everybody who calls to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Heaven. Not here on earth heaven only those who actually do the will of my father in heaven i've done a whole bible study recently on father in heaven if you're oneness you can't understand this but those who actually do the will of my father in heaven will enter on judgment day many will say to me lord lord we prophesied in your name that's what she's doing she's prophesying in your name and cast out demons in your name and perform many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me who break God's laws. You know, Revelation, it, it says, I mean, it just says it. It just says it. They are male virgins. That's what it is. And they are here during the tribulation. The bride of Christ, the church, is not here during the tribulation. And where do I get the bride of Christ? <clears throat> I get it from Ephesians 5. And I'm just going to read the whole chapter and then we will be done. But, you know, it's just so important to know, to test people, test the spirits. Okay, Eph uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. They're separate. God and Christ. God and Christ. Christ is the Son of God. God is the Father. <laughs> he loved us <clears throat> and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. You can't have the gospel without it. You just can't have the gospel without it. God the Father put all the wrath for sin of all time onto Christ on the cross. And Christ himself was the Lamb of God, the perfect sinless sacrifice. Christ, who's always existed, the Alpha and Omega, without, you know, the Word, the Word who was with God and is God. <laughs> He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Then how shall we live? Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. I wonder if she does accept PayPal. Yeah, probably does. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. And really, when we are in the bride of Christ, we are so thankful that we're not going to be here during the tribulation. We are so thankful that God chose us. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse divorce or remarriage either. For the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. You know, I, I get all these comments. People are like, oh, it's just believe, just believe. 
No. It's believing affects your behavior. Believing affects your behavior. You don't participate in the things these people do. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. For this light within you produces, this is our fruit, only what is good and right and true. Thank you, Jesus. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. See, I'm exposing her, but I mean, there are so many of them. It's just so many of them. But we are supposed to expose them. We're supposed to warn, especially the new believers. That's why I do this. It's like I'm trying to warn these new believers. She's got 141,000 subscribers. And they don't know. They don't test it. They listen to her. And she's really working for the dark side. No, we walk in the light. It is shameful even to talk about the things that the ungodly people do in secret, but her, but their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them, for the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. You know, when you are dead in your sins... Awake to righteousness. When you are dead in sins, admit it and quit it. And how do we do this? We quit it by living by the Spirit's power. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. You see how it all fits together? It's so cool. Wise virgins. We live wisely. It's awesome. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. You know, yesterday I went to the store. I was not planning on it, but I thought, hmm, I think I'll go to the grocery store. And I ended up talking with a, a woman who, um, she was actually f there from far away, like maybe an hour and a half away. And I just went up to give her my uh, gospel letter and um, a gospel track. It was not, normally I use Ray Comfort's gospel tracts from Living Waters. They're really good about repentance and using the law for, um, for using the law for being born again and how to be born again. But I also had this little track called, Have You Been Born Again? And I went up to her and I, I was about to leave the store and I just felt like I needed to go over to her. And I went over to her and I said, you know, uh, I wanted to give you this it, and it's a, it was a letter the letter, the gospel left behind letter and this gospel track that is, have you been born again? And it has, which have you been born again is from uh, John chapter three. And I've read it before, but I'm just going to tell you that it has one is believing in Christ. That is third John five, one, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Number two is practicing righteousness Everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. That's 1 John 2.29. Number three is loving other Christians. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. 1 John 3.14. Number four is overcoming the world. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. That is 1 John 5.4. Not habitual sinning. First John 3, 9. I say read the whole chapter. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning. I'm just going to read this little section. The true Christian does not habitually sin because he wants to please God. He wants to obey God. Just like I said, he wants to obey God. Although he is far from perfect, he knows that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And if he does sin, he can confess it directly to God. And he is faithful and just to forgive. 1 John 1, 9. And so, you know, 
he is. He's faithful and just to forgive, but you don't habitually keep on sinning. It all fits together. Then number six, keeping oneself pure. He that is begotten of God keepeth himself. That is 1 John 5, 18. And yeah, those are six characteristics of a born again Christian. And maybe they're not all equally obvious in your life, but if you're born again, God is developing these traits in you. And yeah, so I started to give her that and the letter and she's like, oh, I've already been born again. And she started to tell me about her church that she goes to, which is a long way away. And she said, I asked her about divorce and remarriage. And she said, the pastor definitely hates divorce. Definitely hates divorce. I was like, good, because God hates divorce. And then she started asking me questions. She's like, oh, yeah. She's like, yeah, I see your letter and uh, I'm awake. She's like, I'm awake. I'm awake. I was like, oh, so you know about this and you know about that and things that we're not allowed to talk about. And she's like, oh, absolutely. I absolutely know about that. And I haven't gotten any of those things. I haven't gotten any of those uh, things even before before the new one came out, if y'all know what I'm talking about. It's like She's like, no, absolutely not. Um, she even knew, uh, she didn't know, like, it wasn't, she's like, the, my pastor definitely talks about the rapture, end times, uh, the Antichrist coming and everything. And I said, well, you know, my letter is kind of offensive because the Lord told me in 2017 who the Antichrist is. And, uh, you know, and I told her and she's like, I'm not surprised at all. She says, you know, you, she, you know, he's a homosexual and you know that the man, that it's a man that he is with. It's not a woman. She is. Yeah. And she's like, and you know about how, uh, what happened to uh, Joan, who exposed that, how she suddenly died soon afterwards and all that. So, yeah, I mean, she definitely, definitely was awake. And she's like, I can't wait for the rapture to happen. She's like, it's got to happen soon. I've got, I think she had three sons. And one of the sons was in the military and he is lost. And she said he had been, um, he had taken the thing like, oh my goodness multiple times and that he had been he's been constantly sick he's had it for nine times he had the the pestilence like nine times is what she said so anyway it was just a wonderful thing to meet somebody who is awake ready for the rapture she and her husband are ready for the rapture she's like how can they not see it it's like all the signs are everywhere everywhere and she talked about how about the stuff with the money and um, with our country being given over. Oh, yeah, it was really good. I was like, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for sending me to the grocery store at just the right time. Um, and I just felt led by the Lord to go up and talk to her. So she, she definitely kept the left behind letter, the gospel left behind letter. And she said that she would um, be happy to even show it to the people at her church. So back to this, let's see, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves. Spiritual songs is, being, is singing in tongues singing in tongues and making music to the Lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to God, the father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, God, the father loves Jesus, the son too. You know, how amazing is all that? Okay. Then we get to spirit guided relationships, wives and husbands. And thanks for hanging in there with me. If you get the whole reason for this is why are we the bride of Christ? Why is it that the bride of Christ, made up of the wise virgins, is going to be taken up to heaven in the rapture? Spirit-guided relationships, wives and husbands. This is Ephesians 5, 21. And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, for Jesus Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife, as Christ is the head of the church, 
He is the Savior of his body, the church. So we're the bride of Christ and we are the body of Christ, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, this means to love your wives as Jesus Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. Once again, this is the reason why we study the Bible every day, to be cleansed and washed by God's word, because it, it keeps us motivated to do what the Father wants us to do. Verse 27, and he did this, Jesus Christ did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. Do you see how this means you can't be making excuses for sin that God calls an abomination? If you really truly love the Lord, you're going to be holy and without fault, and that includes getting out of a marriage that God calls adultery. You know, God knows your thoughts. He wants to cleanse you from even having wicked thoughts and lusting after someone else's spouse or being in the bed with someone else's spouse, is, which is adultery, is going to be judged. Verse 28. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body but feeds and cares for it just as Christ cares for the church. Thank you, Jesus. And we are members of his body. As the scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one, also one flesh. And the little note down here is Genesis 2.24, which is where Adam and Eve were created to be one flesh. That's the first marriage. So again, I say each man must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband. And, you know, God hasn't changed. We're to do this. We're to do this. And if the unbeliever leaves, we do not have to, I mean, we're not living with them, so we can't really be submitting to them and loving them when they're not present with us. But we are to stay holy and, and blameless, holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word, which means we can't go and choose to get involved in adultery with someone else. And it's adultery after we've gotten married and made our vows and consummate our marriage. Any sex outside of that marriage is adultery. So, you have to do your best to honor your vows even if they've left. You have to do your best to honor your vows if they're with you and they're an unbeliever. It all fits together. But this is the reason why the church, Jesus Christ loves the church, and the church is not mentioned after Revelation 3. The church is not mentioned. The church is gone. The church has been caught up to meet Jesus in the air. I keep seeing 109. I even had a friend from the UK send me a message uh, yesterday, and she sent it at 109, my time. And 109 means air. I'm just going to show it, and then I'll be done. So if you're if you're new to, like, you, you're seeing a number, and you're going, hmm, what is that? But I really have been seeing 109 a lot, and she sent me a text at 109. I just had to laugh. I'm like, thank you, Lord. It means air. So all you had to do is like Google Strong's. I don't even know if you have. I mean, I just Google Strong's 109. But Strong's Concordance 109 is air. Air. It's in, And then it shows you the verse. Acts 22, 23. 1 Corinthians 9, 26. 1 Corinthians 14, 9. 
Ephesians 2.2, 2, the power of the air. And then there it is, 1 Thessalonians 4.17, which is about the rapture. And you come down here, you can click on it in the New American Standard, the KJV, or the interlinear. And then this is what the interlinear, how you look at it. You see, it gives the number in Strong's. And then it gives the Greek. And then, then we are the living, remaining together with them, will be caught away. See how that's 726? 726. Here it's not harpazo, it's har... Oh boy, how do you pronounce that? Harpegisomata. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see if I click on it. Let's see if it says how to pronounce it. Uh, hmm. It's only, this particular one is only one occurrence. I did not realize that. Wow. I mean, I thought, I thought, wow, only one occurrence of that word. I thought it was harpazo. Wow. It's harpegasomata. I don't know. That's really strange. Um, we'll be caught away. In the clouds, caught away in the clouds, that's the rapture. That's not us being, that's not Jesus coming down. That's us being caught away in the clouds for the meeting of the Lord in the air. See how that is? 109, 109. And so always with the Lord we will be. Praise the Lord. That's not Jesus coming down to set up his kingdom. That's not us having to go through the tribulation for seven years. This is our blessed hope. And 726, 726 is also in these verses. So you can do a search. It's to seize, catch up, snatch away. There it is, Harpazo. And... And it goes and tells you. And the thing was, in Acts 8, Acts 8, where Philip baptized the eunuch, then he actually was snatched up and moved to a different location. That's what happened to him in Acts 8, 39. And then when we get down here to 1 Thessalonians 4, see, there it is, 417. So 109, I'm not saying the rapture is going to be on January 9th. I'm just seeing it. And it just is a constant reminder in the air. The rapture is us going up in the air. So, you know, these people who think that kingdom now or Jesus is coming down to judge and that that's it. No, it's going to be in the air. Um, also, I had done that video about about with the fire and the Jezebel stuff. But, you know, this is really in Jude 123. I just want to mention this. It says in verse 20, But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. See where I am? Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. And verse 22, Have mercy on some who are doubting. Verse 23, save others, snatching them out of the fire, snatching them out of the fire. And, you know, if anybody watches this, I'm praying that if you are in sin, that you really, really will repent and turn to God and be on the narrow road because snatching them out of the fire is what I'm trying to do. I don't want you to be left behind. I don't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to be a hypocrite claiming, Lord, Lord, and you are going to hear, go away, I never knew you. Snatching them out of the fire, and on some have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh, polluted by sin. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, that's Jesus Christ, and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy. I see the rapture in that. To the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Oh boy, I just love spending time in the Word. I just love it. Thanks for watching. If you, you know, even if nobody watches, I still had a good time because <laughs> it was like I just loved. I just love reading the Bible. God bless y'all, Maranatha.